Hey guys, what's up? Have you ever thought about that some people are just so much better in persuading others? You know this one, this one person, this one girl or guy who's always managing to persuade everybody of everything? Well, guess what? There's a technique that they are using and you don't know it. So find out the six most important ways to persuade just about anybody. Now, the reason why this works is because as humans, we are in a way made or our brain is set up to follow certain patterns. And we have to detect those patterns if we want to persuade. And we also have to detect those patterns if we don't want to be persuaded of negative, of bad things. Now to just start, you know, with a kind of um, story that why this works for humans is because it works for all animals. And there is actually a very weird story um, I read recently that there's a fish, a big fish, and there's he, he's living in a symbiosis, or I don't know if you can call it really symbiosis, with a smaller fish. And that smaller fish basically um, goes into the mouth of the big fish, cleaning his teeth of parasites and of other things that that small fish is eating. And the way he, the big fish makes the small fish go inside of him is the following. Open his mouth and float around. And this for some reason, you know, floating not doing anything, suggests to the smaller fish that there's no danger here. And the irony is, guess what? The irony is that once that happened, the big fish closes his mouth and swallows the little fish. Now, I don't want you to be the small fish, and so listen carefully to those six advice on how to persuade anybody or make sure you're not unduly persuaded by something that you don't want. Here we go. Number six, consistency. Now, you might say consistency, what does that really mean, right? Okay, I'll give you an example. At Christmas time, toys uh, are sold in high numbers. The problem that the toy manufacturers are having is that throughout the year, they don't have as much uh, revenue coming in, and so it's very unpredictable. Uh, so what they want to do is they want to make sure that they have a more consistent um, income coming in. Now, consistency is basically the idea that if you promise something or you showed one type of behavior, that you will follow up with another one. So this means that the industry found out that if they put a certain um, you know, campaign in front of the television of the kids that shows a specific action figure, whatever it is, that it's likely that you know, parents, as every year, promise their kids that for Christmas you're going to get this one. Now guess what? Christmas happens and the thing is sold out. What do you think the, the parents are going to do? Give them nothing for Christmas? No. They're going to buy something for Christmas. And of course they're going to want to keep their promise to their kids. And eventually, once it comes back in in stock in February, March, get them what they want. And that's a technique that they've been using and exploiting. And if you, of course, want to know, first, that you want to buy those toys early on if you have kids, and second, not to be convinced by that. So not to make the mistake of falling into that trap. Now, another way of, of doing this is by so-called framing. If somebody tells somebody else that you know, they like something about them, for example, I like your flexibility, I like your open, openness about certain things, this person will, with a high likelihood, not all of a sudden change and not be any more likable, open, and all those attributes that you gave them. Very, very powerful and very simple way to actually influence somebody without them knowing because, oh, they think, oh, he likes my openness or whatever it is, right? Number five, likability. Jordan Belfort, the wolf of Wall Street, said the number one biggest way to create rapport with somebody else is by being just like them. So basically by being just like them, by talking like them, by you know appearing, by using body language, and now don't overly you know um, think that this only means you have to exactly mirror them. If they are sitting like this, you sit like this. No, this is bullshit. I mean, everybody's gonna detect it, come on. But what it means is especially tonality. Tonalities are very difficult to detect and it really goes under the radar. So if you want to influence somebody 
and especially you have this kind of tough colleague or you know uh, somebody that you, you don't find you know you, you feel like you're just in two different worlds but you want to connect with them try this and it, it's i mean it's incredible try it out and let me know in these comments here how that one worked for you okay number four social proof now you know, you've seen that many times and it still works. I mean, everybody on social media who tells you this has been, you know, sold 200,000 times and, you know, they're always boosting around with, uh, you know, you, you cannot hear it anymore at one hand, but on the other hand, social proof works. It shows that this is a good product that you potentially want to have as well because everybody else wants to have it. And this goes so far that um, in a certain way, you know, once you create a movement say be it a, a sect or be it a, a national movement be it you know nazi in the end i mean there is a social chain that gets set free once a big enough amount of people support something it really means that you know it's like a snowball effect it goes all the way bigger just because of that one principle now watch out for that very carefully this one is very dangerous all right, number three, authority. Now, authority is a tough one um, because it goes so much under the radar, you might not even know it happens. But think about it like that. If you go, or let's say you broke your leg, you go to a hospital, whom do you want to um, you know, take care of, of your leg, really? Is it the blonde one meter 80 year old student girl it's first time on a job maybe it is for some of you it might or is it you know that uh doctor that has all this authority 50 years old that comes across a little bit dry but is a real expert he's only focused on your leg um which one would you choose right i mean maybe for a leg maybe you maybe you actually prefer the girl but but for anything else i mean if it's a heart disease like, let's be honest who would you choose right now our society and that's why you read our society has this weird thing about um making us believe that whatever an expert says must be right now that's bullshit because just because you know somebody has authority in, in one area very often they don't have an authority in something else ford you know the car maker back in the 1910 1920 he had radical political views about um, that were pretty much laying the foundation for uh, Nazi Hitler. And now, because he had this authority with machines, for some reason, you know, people read his books on on these other topics as well. All right, so authority is a tough one. Watch out, you don't fall to, into this trap and make use of it because in authority, what's important is not that you actually are an expert, but you, that you come across as an expert or that you can, you know, believably um, connect with an expert. So if you drop names, if you drop names, Warren Buffett, I don't know, you know, Caldini for persuasion, whatever it is, that by the way, a lot of this content here is based on, great guy, you should read his book. Now, if you do that, that alone will give you more authority. Tap into that let me know how it works all right here we come with a number two in persuasion now if you use any of these here in combination of course they're much more powerful than a singular one could be so try to mix them up no matter if you are in sales in marketing you're an entrepreneur if you you know want to go out with um a girlfriend by the way you know if, you, if you're looking for a girl or guy um, of course, you can use these techniques as well. Of course, not always in the same way. You need to be a little bit flexible. But social proof definitely works for you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid when um, you know you think oh, I shouldn't show up with other girls that are just my friends. But maybe she thinks that that's weird. No, show up with a lot of girls. Social proof works in your favor. All right, back to the topic. The number two here in persuasion. Guess what they are. Let me know in the comments if you think they're anything different, but I tell you the number two are the following. Number two is scarcity. Yes, you heard right. Scarcity, urgency. Anything that is scarce, there's a saying that says, if you want to love anything, 
you just need to realize that it might vanish. Now, scarcity is so powerful that, you know, if I tell you this is the last time that you are able to watch this video, by the way, this is the last time that you're able to watch this video. You see the effect it has on you? <laughs> you actually like, I'm gonna make sure I watch it to the end right now. I'm not skipping anymore. But actually, by the time you're watching this right now, you're so far into it, you're not gonna skip it anymore. Hey, scarcity is super powerful. You want to tap into this in every single way. You want to tap into it in every sales way, in any way that you want to persuade somebody of something. If you can show, and of course don't lie about it, but if you can show that there is a scarce element here that might vanish, that this is a unique chance, do it. Because if it is, it's important for the people um, to actually take action. And by the way, this video will not be taken down right away. So don't worry about it. You don't have to watch about the last one. Uh, you know what? Just for, forget about the last reason. It's, it's really not that important. I mean, who cares about persuasion anyways, right? I mean, it's just one of those social skills. Let's just program instead. We don't need social skills. Come on. No, we do. And here is the number one way. The number one, the biggest, most powerful way that you can persuade somebody. It goes so much under the radar. Even if you know it exists, even if you hear it, you will still act upon it just because the way society creates us, the way we think the world should be, it connects with all our values, it connects with what we think is right and wrong, and this is why it's so fucking powerful. You know what it is? All right, here it goes. It's reciprocity. Reciprocity. Now, why do all the people online give you ebooks? Read my free ebook. Well, first, you take that ebook, but then you give, give them your name, right? So you put in the name, which is not too much of a bad deal, right? Because you can always unsubscribe. But also, they know that now that you gave them something, you're much more likely to give something back, to listen a bit more, maybe even to get into one of the programs. By the way, check my link down here for my audiobook. Just kidding, I don't have no audiobook. Hey guys, reciprocity is super powerful and you should find really flexible and creative ways of tapping into this. If you're in sales, well, why not send gift cards and maybe not just normal gift cards, send something special, send a chocolate bar that is a huge chocolate, uh, I don't know, chocolate shoe saying, just trying to get my feet back into the door. Be creative here. It's really, there are so many ways how to be creative about reciprocity. My colleague at work recently, for New Year's, he just sent over um, a mix. He's a DJ and he sent over a mix that he made for somebody else, but he sent it over to me because he knows, you know, I like I like this music and, and he thought of me, he sent it over to me. You know how valued I felt? Great guy, by the way, you should follow him. Hey, reciprocity is super, super strong you want to tap into that. All right, guys, these are my six ways um, of persuasion, of convincing somebody, and really you should tap into that and in order to handle these, there's only one way that really works because it goes so much under the radar. The only thing that works is to actively recognize it. Each time it happens, that's not too difficult, right? Th six things to remember actively recognize it, then make a step back and think, all right, if that factor, you know, was not there right now, would I still make this decision? Because if in general you want to make a decision about something, there needs to be a really convincing case. Only scarcity alone, why would you just have something just because it's scarce? That's like children who are fighting for the same toy, right? Because it's scarce. <laughs> now, be aware of that and once you are aware, really take, take a moment, you know, think about it a bit more and make sure that you use this reasoning. Look at those factors and uh, don't fall into this trap basically. Hey guys, if you like this video, please comment, let me know and especially let me know if you disagree with any of these. Hey, if you like the channel, subscribe and see you in the next video.